Yo, what is up NFL fans? Jay All Day here, and today I want to talk to you about the NFL Draft. Woo, baby, free agency starts next week, and then before you know it, the NFL Draft will be here, and I want to do a mock simulator. PFF has this great program where it uses all their kind of analytics, puts in and predicts who your favorite team is going to pick. Right, so we're going to go through five picks at a time, see what it spits out, and whether or not you like or dislike who PFF thinks your team is going to take in this year's NFL Draft. If you look on your screen, this is the PFF Mock Draft Simulator. It puts all their analytics into formulas to see who your favorite team should draft in this 2024 draft. But since I'm an Eagles fan, I'm going to make their selection at number 22. We're going to go through like five picks at a time because it spits out pretty fast. And we'll go over the five picks and see whether we like what PFF did or who you like in those actual spots. Caleb Williams probably going to go first to the Bears, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's get started. Drake May first to the Bears. Woo! Number four, they got to go wide receiver, Marvin Harrison Jr. And number five. Boom. All right, so let's go over these picks real quick. Let's zoom in. All right, everybody. It looks like PFF selected Drake May with the number one pick by the Chicago Bears. I actually don't hate this pick. I think Drake May and Jaden Daniels from LSU have a better chance of being solid NFL quarterbacks than Caleb Williams. Caleb Williams has all the intangibles when the pocket breaks down, but I haven't seen enough from him in structure to know if he's going to be successful at the NFL level. He's got some bad habits with his footwork that I don't like either. So then, so Washington then grabbed Caleb Williams. If I'm Washington, I'm going with Daniels from LSU. Faux show. And neighbors number three to the Patriots. I don't hate that because the Patriots are not a quarterback away from being anywhere even close to being a solid NFL team. If I'm the Patriots, I'm probably going to sign a free agent quarterback and then roll the dice with this pick, trade this pick, get some more draft capital for the next few years, and really build this roster. Because to be honest, if you're a Patriots fan, you're at least three, maybe even five years away from contending in the AFC. Then they went Marvin Harrison Jr. with the Cardinals. The Cardinals absolutely need a wide receiver. They ran the ball pretty effectively last year. They either go defense or... But Marvin Harrison, or you can't pass up on whatever wide receiver is available between neighbors and Harrison, that's where Arizona is going to go. And number five, surprisingly, my favorite player in the NFL draft is Brock Bowers. I think he's going to be an immediate impact player who's going to completely change a franchise. When he gets the ball in his hands, like his tape stood out to me more than anybody else in this draft. I like neighbors. I like Marvin Harrison Jr. But man, Brock Bowers, he's a little undersized. But whoo, Chargers could go offensive line there, but we'll see what happens. All right, let's go the next five picks. Where did the Giants go? Oh, wide receiver. And then the Titans go cornerback from Toledo. Atlanta. Then Chicago again goes D-line and then cornerback. All right, let's break down these picks. All right. A lot of people like Roma Dunzier, but I watched his tape and he had a lot of trouble getting separation from cornerbacks at the college level. If Adunzier cannot get separation from these cornerbacks who the majority of them will not play in the NFL, I think he's really going to struggle at the NFL level to get separation. We'll see if he can improve on his route running as years go along, but as is, I think he struggles a little bit his rookie year. He doesn't have that breakaway speed. He's got a great catch radius. He's got those big, long arms. He's a solid wide receiver, but I think he might struggle at the NFL level. If I'm the Giants, I'm going offensive line or somewhere else. I don't love that pick. And number seven, the Titans take Quinion Mitchell, the cornerback from Toledo. Mitchell had a really good senior bowl. He proved that he could play with these elite players in college and could potentially play with the good guys in the pros. Picking a guy number seven from Toledo is always a risk, but I don't hate this pick. Number eight, Newton out of Illinois, the D lineman. The Falcons, a lot of people in their mock drafts have Falcons going defense, but Desmond Renner, the quarterback there, is not the future there. So either they're going to sign a guy, maybe Baker Mayfield, maybe a guy like Kirk Cousins, 
But if they don't, they could be in play for a quarterback like Nix from Oregon or J.J. McCarthy from Michigan. I don't love that pick either. And then number 10, Jets. Cooper DeJean from Iowa. I think they're going to go offensive line. they got to protect Aaron Rodgers. Their defense is already super stout, so I don't know what PFF's little metrics are saying right there, but I do not love this pick at all. I'm not doing that if I am the GM of the Jets. All right, let's check out the next five picks. The Vikings are on the clock at number 11. And then we have the Broncos, the Raiders, the Saints, and the Colts, baby. All right, there we go, guys. Ooh. Come on, get the pick in, Colts. What are you doing? Get the pick in. All right, everybody, here we go. Picks 11 through 15. At number 11, the Minnesota Vikings, Jaden Daniel selected. Wow, that's a great guy to fall in their lap all the way at number 11. With Justin Jefferson and Jordan Addison and Jaden Daniels, that offense is going to be immediately elite. Woo, baby, if you're a Vikings fan, you got to be absolutely stoked with that pick. I love it. And then the Broncos, Joe Alt. They could be in line for a quarterback there, but, man, Joe Alt, six foot eight. He's like 315 pounds. Holy goddamn shit. He's a fucking monster, guys. Anybody who gets Joe Alt will be happy. The Broncos will love him. But Sean Payton needs a quarterback, man. We all know Sean Payton loves to have a solid quarterback. So we'll see if he likes any of these guys in this draft. If he doesn't, Joe Alt will definitely be the pick. 13, Nate Wiggins, cornerback out of Clemson. He's one of my favorite cornerbacks in this draft. So for the Raiders fans, you got to love that pick. But they actually need a quarterback too, so they could go quarterback Another, look, they have a lot of needs, man. If you look at needs, quarterback, running back, O-line, D-line, linebacker, D-back, the Raiders need a lot of help. All right, number 14, Fuaga out of Oregon State. He's a great, great tackle. One of my favorite players in the draft. He's big, he's strong. Not quite as big as Joe Alt, but for New Orleans, they need a quarterback too. So for all these teams that need quarterbacks to not be selecting quarterbacks, I don't see the Broncos, Raiders, and Saints all passing up on quarterbacks, but we'll see what happens. And then Troy Fontenot out of Washington, the tackle for the Colts. The Colts need help everywhere, but their main priority is protecting their quarterback, Richardson. They have to protect him. I like Fontenot there. All right, let's go to the next five picks. 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. We have the Seattle, Jacksonville, the Bengals, the Rams, then the Steelers. All right, the Rams are on the clock now. One more pick. All right, baby. Boom. All right, here are the picks, guys. Number 16. The Seahawks are another team that really need to address the trenches. Both the offense and defensive line need a lot of help. I think they need a quarterback, too. Geno Smith is not the guy of the future. They could even go quarterback there. That could surprise some people. They're going Jared Verse, the edge defender. I like that pick there. They need some help on the D-line. They didn't do that great rush in the passer last year. And then the Jacksonville Jaguars getting Arnold, the corner from Alabama, one of the best corners in college football last year. That's a great pick. Jacksonville, I don't know. They need help at wide receiver. What does PFF say? They need a guard, a center, edge defender, D-backs. Some offensive line help there, but all the good offensive linemen are gone. I don't hate the pick there at Number 17 for the Jaguars. Number 18, tackle out of Georgia, Mims. You got to protect Joe Barrow. I love, I like Mims. He, everybody that goes to Georgia that starts is a potential NFL starter. I think if you are a Bengals fan and you get Mims at number 18, you're happy with that. Some of the other teams picking, you know, 12 through 17 could definitely pick Mims there. So that falls in his lap. I like that. And then has the Rams at 19 going with J.J. McCarthy. This is not a bad pick, especially because McCarthy only started for two years in college football. So having him have a redshirt year or two behind Matt Stafford, you get to learn a lot from Matt Stafford, one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL over the last 10 years. That's a great pick with the future in mind for the Rams. And number 20 for the Pittsburgh Steelers, they go center, Powers Johnson from Oregon. It says the Pittsburgh Steelers only need a center, linebackers, and D-backs. That is complete bullshit. The Pittsburgh Steelers need a whole new goddamn team. That offense is complete trash. Horrible. Their offense is absolutely 
terrible, an abomination. And it says they need linebacker and D-back help. The Steelers, I think the Steelers might have their first losing season under Mike Tomlin next year. I do not believe in that roster at all whatsoever. And with the 21st selection of the NFL Draft, the Miami Dolphins go Dallas Turner, the edge defender from Alabama. I like them going defense. That defense dealt with a ton of injuries last year, and Vic Fangio is now with the Eagles, who I'm picking for right now. On the clock, these are some of the best players available. Fashanu, the number 17th ranked player by PFF. Ooh, man, do you go with with Fashanu? at the tackle position and maybe move him in the guard for the next couple years? Or do you go Latu, the edge defender from UCLA? I like J.C. Latham's tape from Alabama. And if you look down here, I mean, the Eagles really need linebackers. So you could go Peyton Wilson from North Carolina State. But picking a guy from North Carolina State makes me a little nervous. There's a lot of offensive line depth at this point in the draft. And I don't see... A lot of cornerbacks. Kool-Aid McKinstry. There's been a lot of people talking about him. Or you go TJ Tampa, the cornerback from Iowa State. One of these two corners. I like the Alabama product. All right. I think the Eagles really got to address the cornerback position because Bradbury is trash. Slay's getting older. So I'm going to pick a corner. Who do I go with? Kool-Aid or Tampa? Kool-Aid or Tampa? I'm going to go Kool-Aid, baby. Kool-Aid's coming to Philly. All right, let's see the next five picks. We got the Texans, Cowboys, Packers, Tampa Bay, and the Cardinals on the clock coming up. Let's see who their picks are going to be. All right, here we go, guys. I picked Kool-Aid McKinstry from Alabama, the cornerback for the Philadelphia Eagles. And then, boom, 23, Fosnew, the Penn State tackle, goes to protect C.J. Stroud. I love that pick. If they can get Fosnew at the number 23 pick, C.J. Stroud's going to be dancing. He's going to be stoked because he's going to throw for like 8,000 yards next year. The dude is an absolute stud. Then the Cowboys, they lost Tyron Smith. It looks like the free agency, so they're going to pick at the tackle from Duke, Graham Barton. But, man, the Cowboys need a lot of help, too. Running back, I don't think they need help at wide receiver. Center, D-line, linebacker, and cornerback. That defense could be addressed as well. And then we go Green Bay Packers, Tyler Newbin, the number one safety in America from Minnesota. I like that pick. If Green Bay can shore up that defense a little bit, the offense looks like it's pretty set. I like the way the offense is running right now. Love looks to be the guy there. They had a great second half of the year. And then the number 26 pick by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They select Liatu Latu, the edge defender from UCLA. He fell a little farther than I thought he would in the draft. Great pickup for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who always need help on the defensive side of the ball. And then the Cardinals, J.C. Latham from Alabama. That's great. Kyler Murray can use all the offensive line help he can get. If J.C. falls all the way to 27, Arizona and Kyler Murray are going to be super stoked about that. All right, let's see these next few picks in the first round, guys. We're going to resume the draft. We're going to clear out the rest of the draft. we got the Buffalo Bills on the clock. Then the Detroit Lions, my favorite to win the Super Bowl next year. I love the Lions and that roster. And then we have the Ravens, 49ers. And then the Chiefs, baby. Here are the last five picks of the 2024 NFL Draft, according to PFF's analytics. All right, we're going to go number 28, the Bills, Lad McConkey from Georgia, the wide receiver. I like Brian Thomas Jr. better personally, but either one of those guys you can't really lose this late in the draft. And then the Lions, Tyler Gonton, they're probably going best player available if they address the tackle situation, but the Lions need a lot of help in the secondary. If there's a cornerback or safety that they could bring in that they think is worthy of a first-round pick, they pick that position there. And the Ravens getting Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU at number 30. Lamar Jackson will be super stoked about that. I love that pick. If Ravens fans, if you can get Brian Thomas Jr. from LSU at number 30, you're going to be super happy with him. He's a great player. And then Troy Franklin, the wide receiver from Oregon, goes to San Francisco. And Zach Frazier, the center from West Virginia. I could also see the Chiefs going wide receiver. Everyone knows they had struggled with the wide receiver position in the regular season this year. But there it is, everybody. The NFL Draft, according to PFF's analytics, as a little simulator action. 
Drake May, Caleb Williams, Malik Neighbors, Marvin Harrison Jr., and Brock Bowers go in the top five. Let me know in the comments below who do you like to go in the top five in the NFL draft, and do you like the player that was picked by your team by PFF? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for tuning in. Peace.